Hi everyone, meteorologist Joe Chaffee here. SNS Storm Chasers, meteorologist JoeChaffee.com, weatherlongisland.com as we take a look at Hurricane Ermine moving onshore uh, along the Florida coast, not far from Apalachicola, Florida. And you can follow the eye very well. It looks like it's actually maybe taking a slight jog a little more to the left as it moves inland, but sometimes these things can wobble a little bit. It's a little hard to follow. Uh, but the eye looks like it kind of took this little jog. Uh, we've got uh, the core of the hurricane on land now. So let's uh, go forward and see what we're going to expect because the weather models uh, tonight really aren't any clearer on how this all plays out. And in fact, um, we see a very interesting twist on the GFS model. So let's uh, run through that for you. There's our hurricane inland. Uh, this part of the forecast that takes us through 36 hours into Saturday morning uh, and then into Saturday afternoon, this is fairly consistent. It's probably a shade to the east, but it just kind of rides the center of this, uh, probably at this point will be downgraded to a tropical storm. But because a lot of the circulation is over the water, it's going to be able to maintain a, a certain amount of tropical storm strength all the way up. Then it emerges off of uh, off, uh, the Outer Banks of North Carolina, Saturday morning, moves northeastward, and then Saturday night is when it comes to a grinding halt, uh, just uh, out south of Montauk and east of Chesapeake Bay. Now, this is Sunday morning. The darker blues, uh, the darkest blue would indicate, that, and where the green is, that's where the edge of the gales are. Um, you know, we're getting so, some breezy conditions here, uh, but nothing too extraordinary. Uh, the, what the map shows you is the surface map with the 10, uh, the, the 10 meter winds, uh, so the winds near the surface. Now, by Sunday afternoon, it actually has gales touching the New Jersey shore, because if you look, what happens is the low center, and at this point, I'm not sure if we're dealing with a, 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 trop a purely tropical storm or some kind of hybrid, um, but at this point, we start to see this hook to the northwest, and it does a little bit of a loop. It actually brings gales to eastern Long Island and the south shore of Long Island, and to coastal New Jersey, it brings some stronger winds upward. So these are sustained winds of 40 to 50 miles an hour uh, from uh, southern Monmouth County all the way down to Cape May and down into coastal Delaware. And what happens is on the GFS, it just sits here, and then starts to inch north northward during the day Monday and Monday night into Tuesday. And then it comes to another grinding halt uh, just south of Law, uh, just east of Atlantic City and south of, of Montauk before it begins to drift southwestward again. And now we're into Thursday and it's still here. Now, look, th this is all quite amazing if this were to work out this way and one of the things that i would point out that uh with regards to let, let's forget rain for a moment um if this were the case that we would get something like this that were to just sit here like this for days and days and days the amount of coastal flooding that would occur would be for for long island uh and for uh, new coastal new jersey would be quite serious indeed uh this is different a totally different setup from Sandy's, because I know that's the usual um, way to try to make the comparison. This is completely different. Let's uh, look at, I'm going to switch over, and we're going to look over at the uh, actual precipitation so we can take a look. And what happens is over time, you know, the model, because that low is sitting over there, you know, the water is not that warm. It's warmer than normal, but it's not that warm. It probably supports it longer than it w would otherwise. Um, the amount of rain that it produces uh, isn't all that much. Uh, it does have squally showers that come in from off the ocean. It's probably underdone to some degree. Uh, but again, the uncertainty here is huge. So I I'm not sure what to, um, you know, how much credibility I want to give to this. Um, but I guess I won't give it any more credibility than I give any other model at this stage of the game. Here's the NAM model, which doesn't go out far enough, and it it only goes out to 84 hours, which would be, here it is on um, Monday morning. So, it, you know, it, it doesn't, 
lifted up northward, but it does do the loop also. So here's the NAM position at 84 hours, which is Monday morning. And we'll switch over to the GFS so you can see the difference. And the GFS is actually about the same. So it's after this period that the GFS starts this northward push that only gets so far. When we look at the upper air, because really this is going to be key, and, and, and it's how this tropical system or whatever it is winds up interacting with that developing upper low. And you can see that first trough pulls out and misses it. This lifts up and then gradually closes off and becomes very vigorous just off the coast. And it just sits there because there's no mechanism to take it out. The main westerlies are way up into Canada and they're not showing any signs of moving south. There's a ridge here. There's a big ridge that builds to its west. And we have a big ridge to the east. So the GFS is implying that this thing is just going to be trapped in between. So, you know, subtle changes from this point are going to make a huge difference in terms of how things play out. Um, let me just switch back to that um, 10 meter wind profile so we can take a look. Because as we go longer term, the winds do drop off, but they're still up there, sustained, you know, 20 to, you know, 20 to 35 you know, probably some higher gusts. Uh, again, if this were to be some semblance of reality, and by the way, I have just now scrolled to Thursday, and it's still there and still looping around. I mean, this could be, um, uh, I mean, if this were right, this is going to, this is going to turn out to be um, a real serious coastal flooding issue uh, for that will just go on for days and days. And um, we're just coming off the, full, the new moon tonight, so the tides are going to be running high into early next week anyhow so I, I you know I wish I could give an answer in terms of what to expect here because um, that, that that there's you know it's, it's just amazing what's what, what's happening I've never seen anything quite like this I'm just gonna real quick let's see if I can pull the spaghetti model plots and see if the new uh, spaghetti model plots are up and by the way this is the National Hurricane Center forecast which is to take it out north northeast east of Atlantic City, south of Mar Montauk, and then it just kind of curves it out to the east by Tuesday evening. You know, they, they haven't looked at the new uh, model package yet, so uh, this is all based on old guidance. And we have the new spaghetti plots, and you can see there's a cluster of it that wants to just take it out straight to the northeast, which is kind of the more logical way things work. And then you have a, a slew of models that keep it much closer to the coast. So... Uh, all in all, I think um, I don't think we're any closer to how this plays out. Um, well, I, of course, we want to see the European, which won't be out till later this morning. Uh, we will continue to keep you updated on all of this uh, as we go through the day on Friday. Um, again, for now, not closer to any kind of resolution other than just seeing what the model potential is. So have a good day. Meteorologist JoeChoppy.com for all the latest. SNSStormChasers.com uh, for storm chasing. They've got some uh, great uh, stuff that's coming out from uh, from Florida. If you want to take a look at it, go to their website, SNS, uh, SSStormChasers.com. And, uh, of course, WeatherLongIsland.com. And do please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's free, and you'll get all the latest weather videos as I produce them.